So it's talking about the ideal education. St. John offers the ideal education uh, where people actually come in, but you would need committed students. Students actually want to come in and actually want to learn. So when you have committed students who want to learn, they want to learn off of each other. If you go to, I guess the only way you can do is if you went to St. John's College because, frankly, nobody sits in a room and listens to one fucking asshole fucking talk the entire hour and actually thinks that that's learning something. They don't do that by choice. Nobody does that by choice. And the reason why they don't do it by choice is because it's not, it doesn't help anybody. So uh, I think Americans can just by what we do on the day-to-day -day basis, you can say why our education is not working. It's uh, Most people are there to get a piece of paper to say that they learned something and then go around bragging that that piece of paper actually means something. That's the reason for the education. That's the reason for it. So, um, yeah. So I feel like the, the professor's job, the main job for the professors is just to make sure that there's no fights. Make sure that there's no fights in between the uh, people. So if there's a good conversation, it's a good dialogue, and people are learning from it, I think that you're there to make sure that it doesn't break out into a fight. You're there to make sure that everybody gets along with each other and everybody's dignity is respected and that everybody gets a chance to participate if they want to participate. I think you probably should have one speaking engagement just because that's an important skill to learn. If you want to succeed in this life, you're going to have to learn how to speak. Um, that's something you have to do. And whether it's sitting at home talking to YouTube or whether it's actually in the college that you're spending like fucking millions of dollars on, I guess that's, that that would be your own choice how you figure that shit out. Yeah, I remember... Um, this one woman at Xavier University had told me about, I was sitting there talking about the Great Books program because I had come across this on my own, and so I wanted to talk to some of my former colleagues about it, and when I had mentioned about the Great Books program, she got mad and says, who the fuck talks about college outside of school? <laughs> Lots of students say shit like that. This school is different than their real life. School is different than real life. Real life and school are completely different, and I think that's the problem. Education should be the same. Schooling and education should be the exact same thing. Unfortunately, schooling interferes with education. So, uh, Hitler used the spoken word, so he always relied on the spoken word, so you always got to be skeptical of anybody that's speaking. You should be skeptical of me now since I'm speaking, but I don't know. My thoughts are, I mean, this is out to the entire world. I'm getting like four hits on each of these videos apiece, so I, I, don't, I don't really feel like... This isn't exactly how to use propaganda. The best way Hitler is talking about it is like the spoken word out in the uh, arena, out in the assembly, speaking truth to power, telling everybody, you know, hey, what's up? Hey, you know, you need to um, uh, do as I say. You know, everybody's uh, screwing the Germans over, so we need to kill a bunch of fucking Jews and a bunch of fucking um, homosexuals and uh, Catholics and um, communists. So... Yeah, that's that's Hitler, right? So Hitler's, you know, he, he said the spoken word. You can control the masses with the spoken word. And professors, teachers, everybody knows that. The cops, that's why you have a bullhorn. That's why you say you must disperse, you must get out. When you tell everybody that was the, even Jamestown or um, Jonestown, Jonestown in South America, Jim Jones with the Kool-Aid in the 70s, a hundred and so people fucking drunk a bunch of fucking Kool-Aid and they all fucking died. About 100, 100 people. And the way that they uh, had ruled that camp was through the, um, they had electric phones. They had like, um, you know, some sort of megaphone system to where when you spoke up and you said, hey, I don't like this, I don't like, you know, or uh, when, when the Jim Jones got on there and says, okay, we're doing this, we're all meeting today and we're doing this drill and we're having that drill. That's when, um, you know, that's how they control you. That's how they manipulate you. It's how Hitler does it. It's how the professor does it. Tell, in fact, that's the only way you can actually tell somebody to be your bitch, right? I guess you could, like, write them a letter and say, hey, will you be my bitch? But it's easier just to say, hey, you will do as I say, and then hope that that works and hope that that weeds out the weak, right? As I've heard people say. So, um, Hitler used a spoken word, so you should always be skeptical of the spoken word. He says that's the best propaganda tool. Uh, yeah, yeah, later on. I was talking about we need to bring democracy in the classroom. One person had objected to it, and he said that actually I need somebody to explain democracy to me because I don't understand all these distinctions and all these concepts. I don't understand it, and I need someone smart to tell me. That's the fucking point. That's the fucking point. That's why our fucking education is fucking broken. As long as you have to rely on experts to teach you some shit like democracy, which he went to Kyrgyzstan or Kyrgyzstan or whatever to teach democracy. No wonder that shit failed. Motherfucker don't know democracy. Um, but, uh, uh, that's the point, is that we need some expert to rely on, that way we shouldn't feel comfortable with our own knowledge about the subject, we should rely on their knowledge, they're the expert, we should go to them if we have any questions about it. 
they're a sage on the stage. You're supposed to worship them, and they're not a god by the side. They're not beside you on, you know, uh, fighting the fight with you. They're above you. They're talking over you. So, so you know, who the fuck ever wants to be at lectures anyways? In general, whenever somebody's, like, arguing with you, they, they'll say some shit like, you know what, I just fucking schooled your ass. I fucking schooled you. Motherfucker, I just schooled you. You did not know that, and I just fucking taught you some shit, and now you've been schooled. Okay? So that's, uh... That's what schooled means on the streets. If you schooled somebody, that means you, you taught them something or you fucking, you know, handled them some way. It's a bad thing. You don't want to be schooled. <laughs> you don't want to be schooled on the streets. You want me to school you? Oh, I'm going to school you. To be lectured at is to be yelled at. To be told you're not smart enough to assume that you have no ideas or thoughts in your head. In fact, I read in the Rules for Radicals, even when you know more than other people, sometimes just the way you explain it can be insulting. So you have to be careful that you're not explaining to them or you're not hurting their pride or dignity when you explain things that they don't understand or that they don't know. Um, which I've always actually felt very comfortable asking questions, but I guess some, some other folks have not. Um, and if you don't believe any of the shit I'm trying to say, try to express an original idea. Try to not agree with the fucking professor. Try to tell them that they that they said or did something wrong. Try to tell them that. See what the fuck happens. See if that, that actually flies. See if that works well with your professor. Okay? Okay. <laughs> so, I'm here to get a piece of paper. My friends and relationships matter the most, but when I'm in a room with an insecure and an egotistical boss, they'll hound you even if you talk to your neighbor. So, again, I'm not learning the facts. I'm not making a friendship I need. There's always some fucking obedient Uncle Tom who just can't wait to knock your shit down. Uh, the master wants us fighting over his love. He gets off through it. He loves that shit. The meaner you are to each other, the better they feel. Some professors actually want you to fight. Class, ready to fight. Begin. They entertain me. I want to be entertained by this. So, um... You know, they, they love to feel better about themselves, especially if you're the one with the independent mind and they can fucking laugh at you. And then you got this guy over here who's fucking asking good questions, but I'm not going to admit to that. Ha, 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 ha. So you kind of use the appeal of your uh, popularity in order to smash uh, the good ideas. You're supposed to feel like you aren't capable of democracy, right? They don't like it when you whisper. Our narratives aren't intertwining. It's like a cage match. It's like Susanna Collins' Hunger Games. We're supposed to fight and claw each other for the claw at each other for the masses' delight, like a survivor game, like a fight to the death. America's dog eat dog anyway, so I ain't trying to create any more enemies. So how the fuck do you get an education where people actually have the same? You know what? We're in this together, so let's let's be able to fight this out. Let's do this better. Let's make this better. Who? When can you get in a group like that? When does that happen? When does that happen? When does democracy happen in America? I've been in America in 30 years of my life. I haven't seen any fucking democracy. Even our fucking political system is not a democracy. 11% is coming out as a turnout rate here in Kentucky. 11%? That ain't a democracy. 25% in the governor's race. Less than 50% in the presidential race coming up. Mitt Romney's going to fucking take Kentucky. It's a safe state. It's not. Don't even, don't even fucking vote. Don't waste your vote. Don't vote for Obama or Romney. Neither one of them fucking matter. It's going to go to Romney, so vote for a third party just to show that you're a dickhead, that you understand the system, and you say, fuck both the system. Fuck both parties. And in fact, the far right and the far left have five major issues. Five major issues. They want to audit the Fed. They want to balance the budget. They want to end the Patriot Act. They want to end the Empire Wars, and they want to decriminalize all drugs. So they're against the prohibition, they're against the wars, and they're um, against the Patriot Act. So there's a lot of major issues that both the far right and the far left are in agreement on. Those are the issues that Ron Paul had brought Ralph Nader and some of the uh, libertarians together on, and those were the five issues that they had identified as being, um, you know, the issues that they actually uh, agree on. And uh, Ron Paul was saying that the, all the third parties should get together so they, they would be a powerful bloc by themselves, but third party candidates are never like Nader actually wasn't like that. He was kind of the dickhead there. Uh, but Nader did take the, uh, you know, he did sit next to Ron Paul. He's happy to take that endorsement, right? Uh, Ron Paul couldn't go to the two major party candidates, so he had to go to the the independent movement. And um, and and that's that's appalling when the far right and the far left agree on major fucking policy issues and fucking the, the duopoly. The Democrats and Republicans are fucked. You guys ain't doing enough. You're fucked. You, you all fucking suck. You're not carrying all the ideas that people actually care about now, and let alone coming up with new fucking ideas. 
It's all about new ideas. I mean, that's how you get kicked out of class. You come up with a new idea. So no wonder a political establishment doesn't like new ideas. I mean, Ron Paul is like the guy who's fucking making fart sounds in the back of the class, but in the long run, who do you like more? That fucking guy in the back of the class making fart noises or that piece of shit fucking literature fucking teacher that was drunk all the fucking time and had ankles that fucking snapped and made sure that or fucking bored you to death in U.S. history, you know? What the fuck? And I guess, I don't know, just so that I'm not picking on Sherry Wall, she was just the one that I had last, but let's take the first, um, let's take the first, you know, first uh, year that I was at U of L, I was talking to, I inquired a lot more, second year, I just kind of give up on those students, and I said, fuck them, why well, fucking talk to everybody, they don't give a fuck about what I have to say, fuck them, they want to sit there like a bunch of zombies, and then they just want to shit on me when I fucking speak up, fuck you all. Uh, Paula Freire talks about a sadistic love. The oppressors only like a complete domination over another person or animate creature. It's the very essence of the sadistic drive. Another way of formulating the same thought is to say the aim of sadism is to transform a man into a thing. Something animate into something inanimate. Something since by complete and absolute control the living loses one essential quality of life. Freedom. As the oppressor consciousness is in order to dominate, tries to deter the drive to search, the restlessness, and the creative power which characteri characterizes life, it kills it. So you don't try to drive, you don't have this inquiry, you don't have this curiosity, this restlessness, this creative power. When you're sitting in the classroom, you're just fucking being dumbed down like a dumb fuck. And you keep on getting dumbed down and dumbed down and dumbed down. Sadistic love is a perverted love. Sadistic love is a love of death, not of life. Dialogue must require an ever-present curiosity with the object of knowledge. Thus, dialogue is never an end in itself, but as a means to develop a better comprehension about the object of knowledge. If students are not able to transform their lived experience into knowledge and to use the already acquired knowledge as a process to unknowledge, well, then they're fucked, right? If they're not able to do that. They need to learn how to do that. Curiosity about the object of knowledge and a willingness and openness to engage theoretical readings and discussions is fundamental. So you have to be curious about the subject material and uh, about the object of the knowledge and willingness and openness to engage in theoretical readings and discussions. You must be able to do that. That's how you get education. I must intervene in teaching the peasants that their hunger is socially constructed and work with them to help identify those, socially re those responsible for the social construction, which in my view is a crime against humanity. At all times, we are both students and teachers. Professor Ziegler, right, I said that banking concept of uh, education, they give you the knowledge as a gift, but you can't be taking a gift. Someone cannot teach you how to read a, a bike like a gift. Here's how to be taught how to ride a bike. You learn how to ride a bike when you get on the seat and you start pedaling. That's how you learn how to ride a bike. And if there's somebody teaching how to ride a bike, they're sitting there watching you do the thing. Okay? They're giving you praise. They're giving you the attention that you need. And they're watching you get up and do it. They're not fucking riding the damn bike in front of the fucking class for an hour for fucking months on the end. They're not riding a bike and doing tricks and willies and showing how many fucking things that they know about the bike. And then go home with the fucking bike in their hands. That's not what the, that's not how teachers are supposed to work and that's exactly how the teachers are working. So, you know, Uncle Tom's, they're fucking dicks. I don't know. It's 13 minutes. I'm getting to about the end of this. The, uh, I guess some other uh, professors I had. Let's see. I had, I mean, I can think of, oh, yeah, the uh, Bruce Tyler story. So, Bruce Tyler, I had, there's a, uh, a black and a white guy that I used to talk to, which I, they're total fucking assholes. It actually shows the true characteristics of how they talked about outside of class. Inside of class, it was all about Martin Luther King, black politics. Uh, Josephine Baker, of Tulsa Race Riot, so it was a lot about, you know, it was about black history, but the, uh, black history, uh, right after finishing MLK, I got out, I was fucking pumped, I was excited, I was like, man, we could change the world, we could do things, and I swear to God, these fucking two dickheads just fucking made fun of me, and just laughed at me for, like, for on and on and on, I'm sitting there struggling, trying to fucking come up with an argument that they would actually agree with, fucking clear issues, I said, well, you know, I could just, I don't know, I mean, when I get frustrated, I'm like, I'm, I could just, uh, you know, I could just spit on him. I could spit on somebody, right? I could spit on somebody. That'll do something. Oh, oh you spit on somebody. That's what you think is going <laughs> to... I just spit everywhere here. But you spit on somebody, you think that's going to change something? <laughs> and they just kept on fucking playing, fucking doing the jokes. Like, suck my dick. Both you motherfuckers, okay? Um, but, like, the point of that is that they went outside. And I'm saying I could change things. That I could be like MLK or whatever. and Or that I want to be like MLK. MLK inspired me. I'm not MLK. I'm not close to MLK. Uh, but he's a good model to live by. He's a good man model of manhood to live by, better than Jesus, okay? So if you want to live like a, a good man, you live like MLK, not like Jesus. 
But after they went back outside, they talked about how MLK, couldn't, you couldn't change things. Don't even fucking try. Don't even try to do it. They're in college. They're trying to better themselves. If they can get a fucking job, why can't I change the fucking world? Because they're fucking assholes and they don't believe and they want to fucking squash any type of independent thought or curiosity that they see that they don't understand. So instead of actually engaging with me, they want to fucking mock me because they didn't understand me since they're fucking dead on the inside. So, you fucking dickheads. But, uh, what would the professor say about that shit? You're sitting there talking about MLK and then you go out and you badmouth them? Bunch of fucking hypocrites, students. Professors, too. Dickheads.